Welcome back to Crazy Days Crew. I'm Laura and you're watching Thursday Threads. And today we're going to look at super stash busting, fast and fun method for making the bow tie quilt. But first I'm really excited. Check it out. My son Nick designed this. I'm so proud of him. And check it out. I had a lot of fun with this at Joann's. They were having a really good sale on patterns, so I just filled my bag up with the patterns in the sh in the store, and then took them out, handed them to the clerk, and said, "I don't need a plastic bag. Just put just put them in that bag." So that was fun. But I I, I have to brag on my son though. I'm so proud of him for him designing a new logo for my sewing episodes. He's really talented. He doesn't know it, but he, he is. I, I just wish he could see it through my eyes. And all of these will be at the bottom of the description. We've taken kind of a hiatus from making videos, and I apologize to you guys for that. We have just been having so much fun with seeds and garden and different things and then studying for the ACT and getting ready for graduations and just, it's been real, real busy. But I'm back. We're going to start off with a really great block. It's kind of an old fashioned block. Been around for a long time. And you can... Do it with the certain colors if that's what you want, or you can use it as a stash buster. And that's what I'm doing. I just went to Walmart and picked up a solid color. And then I went through my stash and I picked out, you know, a handful of ones that I was, you know, getting low on. And what I did, I cut six and a half inch squares of the background. I cut six and a half inch squares of my pattern fabric. And I cut three inch squares of my pattern fabric. So the first thing that I want to do is draw a line corner to corner on my patterns, my pattern fabric. After I press this, I'm going to sew it down to a corner of my gray. But we'll press all this before we do. Nothing to it, right? So I've got six and a half inch gray. I have six and a half inch patterned. And I have three inch of the patterned. And on the three inches, I am marking the line from corner to corner. Let's go make sure all of our fabric is nicely pressed and then we'll take it to the machine. What's great about this particular block is one, it's going to make a big block. So you can make a quilt top in little to no time. You're going to use up a lot of your stash. Now if you've just got snitzels, no, you're going to need to have, you know, you know, seven inches of something. And then I said we're just going to take it 
and sew it down. And I have been getting a lot more comfortable with not pinning. I want to pin this so I can hold it up. And I'm just going to sew right on that line that I've drawn. And you guys know me by now. I would go through and do all of these, you know, do the assembly line process. And we have got exciting times ahead for this family, for Crazy Dave's crew, and for DIY Dave and friends, or in company. We're in a garden. We're getting eggs. We've got some more chickens. I've signed up for a couple of subscription boxes, trying to expand my skill set. I like to backtrack a little bit. Again, I'm just going to match this up to one of the corners. do these in any size. I just decided to do the big ones because I want to go with the whole, you know, fast and furious, fast and fun, you know, uh, thing of If you wanted to do it smaller, well, I'm starting with six and a half inches on my my you know my main blocks, three inches on my small blocks. Well, let's say you've got a five and a half inch block. All right, so do your background in five and a half inches, and do your patterns in five and a half inches. Then take a half inch off and divide by two. So that means you make your square two and a half inches. If it's a four and a half inch background and pattern block, I'd make the little squares two inches. And you have seen me do this before, so I think most of you know what's going to happen next. Let me go ahead and get this third one in there. Don't like leaving my sewing machine empty hanging. I like making sure I'm using my leaders and enders, whether it's the same block or a different block. You can see I've already done a number of them earlier today. I was just having so much fun. I really like my cutting gizmo too. Now I could do it with my machine. My machine's got a little cutter back there. Stretching can be a, a pain for me. Holding any of my muscles, my eyes up, my hands up, my arms up. It causes some weakness. So anything that I can do to alleviate any of the strain is a plus. All right, so I've got those two there. Got some pink. Got a gray. I'm gonna work on this purple one. So now we've got our purple. Let's press it down to set the seam. Now this this probably looks very uncomfortable to you guys, but this is great. My husband bought me this wonderful swivel chair. I have one upstairs too, so if I'm cooking something for a long period, I can sit instead of having to stand. But I can just swivel around, and boom, do my little pressing. And now we are going to cut 
a quarter inch above our seam line. Did you guys knew that? I know you did. That's what we do, right? So there's my seam line, and I'm going to put a quarter inch mark on that seam, and then I'm going to cut along there. You can save these if you wanted to, because um, you could sew them together. And make some half triangles and I am going to save mine just because I'm silly like that we're going to press these open and I am probably going to try to make sure I'm always pressing toward the gray so let's press that and then we'll start putting them together so one is going to go there one is going to go there. One of our pattern pieces there. And a pattern piece there. And we have a bow tie. This is the quickest, easiest, no frills method. No inset seams. Being a 12 inch finished block or a 12 and a half inch unfinished block the quilt top will go very very quickly so let's sew these together All right, this time I didn't press towards the gray and I'm going to show you why I didn't want to press it this way because then you're going to have some bulk so I'm pressing it that way so it's nice and flat. Same thing with this one. So the, the old rule of always press towards the dark, not always. I think it's more important to have it be nice and flat. And by having them going towards the purple, I can nest my seams. So I'm just going to kind of move that along up until I feel it lock. And then I am gonna, going to pin it because I don't want that to move. And I don't want these to move. So I want this to be a nice straight line. Don't be afraid to use your fingernails to kind of move the top fabric. Even if you've got, you know, no nails at all. You can still get it to work. We're just going to sew that down there. Be right back. And when you finish, this is what you have. Now when you square it up, right there, that's your center point and I would definitely use your seams and your corners as your guide for centering up so each one of these should be six and a quarter so let's see so let's see we've got there's six and a quarter on that seam and six and a quarter on this seam I hope y'all can see that so there's the six and a quarter mark right there and six and a quarter mark going up And then the same thing on this one. So six and a quarter on that seam. Six and a quarter on that seam. Okay. 
use what's there to help you with your guide. You never just want to take the block as a whole and measure it. You want to take from the center to the outside. It's just a little bit right there. Now, if you've got one of the great big ones, you know, well, you can get two sides done at the same time. And I do have one, and I love it. But you can do it with a smaller one. There we go. So we can see we're at 12 and a half that way and 12 and a half that way. And there you go. Well, I truly hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you will dig into your stash. And honestly, if you wanted it to be a total scrapper, um, you know, use... I guess different colors on those. I would definitely use the same for each block though. But there's one. I love the idea of me of using up some of my stash. There's one. Now we just have to decide how we're going to arrange them. And that, my friends, is a totally independent choice. You could put plain blocks in between. You can do sashing. You can have them going opposite directions. Um, there's just have them all go in the same direction. So many different options. Would love to see pictures, so please find us on Facebook under Sewing and Crocheting for Beginners and send us pictures. And there is a wide variety of other resources there on Facebook. There are uh, uh, block swaps, there is the uh, Quilt Block Lottery, fabulous group, and each month it's a different block. A lot of fun. I think the lady that administers I think the administrator of that group is just marvelous. She does such a great job. There's a lot of different groups. Search them out. So much to learn. And so many different ideas and different tips and tricks. And all you got to do is do. So find us on Facebook. Sewing and Crocheting for Beginners. Also Crazy Dave's Crew on Facebook and on the web at cdcrew.com. And don't forget to check out our other channel, DIY Dave and Company. I am so glad to be back with my sewing machine and my messy, messy sewing room and my slowly emptying fabric shelves. I'm just really excited to be back with you guys. And I hope this will inspire you and get you sewing. Happy sewing, happy day, have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time, sooner than the last time. Thank you so much for watching. <music>